Well, guys, I got a special treat for you today. I've got Moon Henry in here, and I'm just going to give him a... We're just going to have a long conversation. We're going to talk about everything between seeking the truth, conspiracy theories, and the little season of Satan. So, hey, man, welcome to the show, Moon. Glad to have you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. You have just started to learn about the possibility that we're in the little season, and obviously that seems to be a con connecting tissue with a lot of us lately. So, man, just... um. Let's just go. Let's go right into it. Like how? Like how has that changed your view on all the the things you've been seeking lately? Man, it, it, it's changed everything. Everything. Every every literal thing. So like obviously when we come up to the new season, the first thing we have to do is put our pride down, put our knowledge down, everything we know, because we you know we a lot of us you know we love history. We we look into everything, and finding out that everything's a lie, rewritten or miscoursed. Is one of those things. So it's like putting your pride down first and say, okay, maybe I have to walk into uncharted territories and not know the truth, not know what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. that, that's so. At first, it's really depressing, man. You're like, who am I? Why am I? <laughs> am I still a Christian? You know, that, those are the first things that come up. But after that, man, I think it's really freeing to actually experience the truth. You know, um, and it's like the more you look into it, the more you're like, it's not a possibility. It's it's the truth. If you guys don't know Moon Henry, he's got a massive TikTok presence. He's big on Facebook and like probably all the social media apps. I'm sure you probably, even if you don't know him, you probably have seen him before because that's how these apps work. But um, yeah, so as somebody who does kind of what I do, you like poke out little conspiracy theories, things in the news that obviously relate to Christians and who obviously are paying attention to things. Yeah, I like how you said that about the pride thing because it's like, because I've, you, you know, I think you've been doing this for a couple of years now, right? About a year and a half. Okay, so about a year and a half. And it's like, I know when I was doing it and I was growing and I was learning, I, I don't think I ever thought I knew everything. But it is like, it is humbling to think that like your whole basis of what you're speaking on could be, <laughs> you know, your foundation could be a little off. And I mean, that that's weird. So yeah, it, tell us about that. So how did you come to grips with that as far as like, did you have to go back and look at old videos and say, <laughs> I have to take that down? Well, I, so now, um, you know, I, it's been about three weeks. Um, and I guess first I'll talk about the way I first found out was I got on the phone with Brian from Demon Racers and he started telling me about it a whole bunch. And mm -hmm. I got on the phone with him and every time I've seen Tartaria, I've always had a pit in my stomach knowing just, I just, every time I saw it, I was like, that's the millennial kingdom, but I would not look into it. Right. Cognitive dissonance. Mm. And then, you know, uh, one thing that I love to cover is eschatology. You know, I've, I've always been very, very deep in the eschatology, especially historically, too. And then that was that was a hard pill to swallow, that every literal thing I had said was wrong. <laughs> it's, it's all wrong. You know what I mean? It's like, we're not yeah. in this seal. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're actually deceived in a completely different area, and they're recreating revelations, you know? So it's like, it's like, you know... When we do this, we're like every day we learn something new and we correct what we did in the past. You know, we'll never know everything, but, you know, the goal is to be able to correct yourself when you make mistakes. Yeah, I like I like what you said about that, because that was funny, because I think that I I must have been very similar to you. Like when I first started making TikToks, it was about we're in the end times. So like literally I had a little series on the book of Revelation is playing out before our eyes. That was like that was that's literally how I started and I got a following on TikTok. So I, I kind of did those kind of videos. And then obviously then I started digging into like the, the movie stuff. Cause that's, I kind of like, a, I'm like, a, I'm kind of the pop culture guy because I've watched a million movies and I, and now I remember references to them. Oh, is this what they were saying there? I didn't notice that. But then I would always come back. If there was end times, news, I would make videos about that. But obviously I'm not like, I didn't have like, a, I wasn't a one note channel. So I talked about more than that. So, but, but I would say that similar to you, when somebody said, oh, you got to start talking about the mud flood. And I'm like, the mud flood, what is that? <laughs> and then you start looking into it and you're like, that is weird. Like, I don't know where to put that. And I remember like trying to ask certain people like, okay, so where did all the mud come from? Like, when did this happen? I was like, this can't be Noah's flood. This has to be something else. And it was like, I kind of just put it to the side a little bit. And I said, I heard somebody say that, oh, what if that was the millennial kingdom? And what if, what if Jesus already came back? And I thought, huh? Nah. And then just, <laughs> just let's put that to the side and go make videos about other things about like ancient angels and Nephilim and, and the Noah stuff. And yeah. So like, so what, so what really puts you over the edge as far as like, yes, from like, uh, 
to yes, I believe it. Um, I guess there's a few main things, and you know, besides all the historical knowledge I've been able to collect over the years, the what did it for me is is simply what Jesus said. Surely I tell you the truth in three different references in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, I believe. I tell you the truth mm -hmm. that some standing here right now will not taste death until they see me coming. The verse before being in accord with coming in his father's glory, the second coming. And the word for death in Greek is, I believe, thatnos or thatnois, and it means physical death. And we know the second death does not exist until the white throne, and you know, or mm -hmm. then pass away. So it, it had to be either Jesus is lying, or I'm wrong, and he came back just as he said, quickly, surely, I come quickly, the time's at hand, the kingdom of heaven here, this is the last Antichrist, this is time. You know, when I had to come to terms with that, that's how it, it, was, it was that one simple sentence from Jesus did it for me because he's not a liar. You know, what he says right. is what he says. Yeah, and I love that. I, I love that because, yeah, that's I believe that that is our strongest case that the book of Revelation happened. You know, like all the things from Daniel happened in the times of the apostles because because that's what the Bible says. And again, like then then piecing together the history after that, that's way harder. I mean, because, like, again, if we're already conspiracy theorists, we don't trust the history books. Well, it's very hard for us to make a case to people who don't want to believe based on history when we even say we don't even we don't know how reliable that is. But so what? But, but obviously, these verses have been wrestled around by different, obviously, different scholars for years and what they would mean. So what were you was your what was your interpretation until recently? Like. What, like, what did you think he meant then? What do you think what he meant by this generation? Because again, like those are those are things that people have to kind of maneuver around whatever they believe their eschatology to mean. Yeah. Um, to, to be honest, man, my eyes were completely blinded to the fact that Jesus said that. Like all my time through the Gospels, especially, you know, but um, but especially like in Revelations two or two and three, these are two of the churches and that are in Asia Minor, not are now but they, they're not they, they were demolished in 70 ad so right churches that are and it is simply just a cognitive dissonance just reading the bible when you don't get sun like you know nowadays my read I, if i don't get it i'll read it over and over and over open the coordinates or open greek or hebrew and i'll, I'll read it till i get it but that one verse just simply blowing over it you know just reading it like oh i wonder what that means so it was just cognitive <laughs> dissonance man that's you know yeah i've heard that i always heard the um the, the next chapter is, in, especially in, in the book of Matthew, so it's, it ends with that verse. And then the next verse is you have the transfiguration. So they're saying, oh, that's what he meant. So they see Jesus, they see it's um, John, James, and Peter seeing Jesus in a glorified body with, with uh, Moses and Elijah. But he said, some standing here will not taste death until you see it. Well, first off, no, nobody died at that point. No, none of the apostles were dead. So that's a weird way to say it. And obviously the implication is some of you will be dead when this happens. So yeah. like, so some of you won't be, some of you will be. And then I said, I go back into, is it John one, I think 51, 50 and 51. It actually mentions that Jesus tells Nathaniel specifically, you will not, you, you will see, you, yeah, like he said, I saw you on the fig tree. You'll see greater things than these. You'll see heaven open with the, with angels ascending and descending on the son of man. So like, so he was told specifically, he was not up on the transfiguration. He did not get the vision for revelation. So if you don't believe that he told Nathaniel the truth, then, then you are calling Jesus a liar. Amen. I mean, but, but it is crazy. Like, yeah, cause, cause once you see it, as I was saying, once you see it, it's, it's all over the place. I was even, I was even telling people at the last live I just did, I was talking about that passage in Corinthians, first Corinthians seven, Paul's telling people it's better to not get married. And a lot of people know he says that. But they don't know why he says that. He was saying, in this present distress, for the time is short. The current world is passing away as we know it. And it's like, those are all the reasons he says don't get married. Because, hey, guys, the world's about to end. Let's focus on what's happening right now. And like, but, but yeah, all of us with the blinders on, we're just, oh, Paul doesn't think, he doesn't think people should get married. <laughs> like, no, he doesn't think people that he's writing the letter to should get married if they're not. And that's the whole thing where it's like the, 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 the letter to the Corinthians was to the Corinthians. It was not to Moon Henry. It was not to JT. It was not to this dispensational church age of like this, this kind of church. He's like, he's telling these specific people 
based on the things that are happening right then. For sure, man. And it's like, you know, the Bible, it wasn't written to us. It is for us. And it's not written yeah. to us. And then I found it really cool in Alpha Talks when it's like, they'll say, well, the gospel has to be preached to every creature. Well, in Colossians, that happened. The gospel <laughs> was preached. And also, remember all the miracles the apostles were doing. And in the book of Acts, you know, they were making thousands upon thousands. And if you imagine that multiplied, right, you have 6,000, then they reach maybe 20,000, 20,000. So it's very easy to believe, especially with the miracles that they, they reached everybody with the gospel. I mean, 1.1 million Jews died. Um, from Antiquity of the Jews, I believe Josephus wrote it, 1.1 million died in just yeah. Rome. Just Rome. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a crazy occurrence. And even, even it's funny, I always, I, I bring in this a lot, up a lot lately, is that, so, this, so Jesus, remember, he tells the apostles, don't even think about what you'll, you'll say when you're called before men, because the Holy Spirit's going to speak through you. And so after they leave the upper room, obviously the Holy Spirit's poured out on them. They're speaking in, in every different language, proclaiming the gospel in this international city. And then somebody says, this is uh, Acts 2, starting with verse 13. But other mockers say, said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, stand, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what is uttered through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And then he goes on to quote all of Prophet Joel about the day of the Lord. And it's funny so, that we would contort the, um, you know, that, you know, in these last times, the young men would dream dreams, our vision. It's funny how we contort the, the last days for them to be 2,000 years. It's funny how we take this, you know, the time's at hand. It, it time is now, you know, get ready. You, little children, you've heard there's many Antichrists, but right now is the last time. It's funny how we contort that to be 2,000 years. How, like, and they'll say, a day with the Lord is 1,000 years. No, that's not what the verse means. It means a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Not every day means a thousand years, you know. Yeah, that it could they could be a hundred thousand years from now because it'd only be a hundred days to God. They, they they add and take away, man. They add and take away, like you're talking about in uh, was it Matthew sixteen or eighteen where he tells them that you will not die until you see me coming. Um, they say, oh, the next verse. He's talking about simple grammar rules, right? When Jesus is talking about the second coming to the disciples, they ask, you know, about all this stuff. When he's answering them and telling them, or when he's preaching and ministering, saying that you will see me come back and some of you will not taste death. Simple grammar rules, what are you talking about? The people who were right there in front of him at the time of his saying, those are the people who will not pass away. Those are the people that will see the second coming, not the next chapter. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's... A that's what needs to be understood is that, again, like, so if, if Paul wrote a letter to the Romans, it was to the Romans. If you wrote one to the Ephesians, they're different. <laughs> the contexts are different. You know, it's not written for, again, like, the Word of God obviously can convict you in ways where Jesus is speaking to someone else and you get a message from God in that. But it has to be true to them first, right? So, so Jesus did not write the Gospels. Jesus is speaking to the people he's speaking to, and people are writing down the things he said to them. So he wasn't speaking of the church age. He was talking directly to these people. And then obviously you take for that what you will. I mean, I think more than anything, it's like you, it, the gospel showed that Jesus was who he said he was, what he did, and what was going to happen after that. And obviously all that's been confirmed to be true. But like, yeah, so you trying to get a lesson from it is like, yeah, you get the lesson that, you, that the Holy Spirit leads you to get. But the historical things that he's saying are going to happen, happen. Like that... I, I'm, there's no shadow, there's beyond a shadow of doubt that happened at this point. And if it's not true to the people he was speaking to, it's just not true then. You know what I mean? Like if it didn't happen to them, it did not happen. And I think that that's where, like I got, I said, I was starting to get a little angry because at first I was a little defensive about the position we're at. But then I started to get a little angry, like, okay, so you're making me have to prove what Jesus said was correct. All I'm saying is like, he says specifically these things are happening. Now I got to prove that the stars fell. I got to prove that, that, that heaven was rolled back like a scroll. I got to prove all these other things. And even if I could prove to you those things, you still wouldn't believe because you know in your head, Jesus has not come back yet. Like, you know that, right? So you're so convinced that he did not come back that, that it wouldn't matter what's in the Bible and what I could show you because you don't believe it. And I think that that is... If they were being honest, that's what they would say, because I think that that's how 
that's how you and I could miss what it was said is because we know he didn't come back yet. So when we read the Bible, we have to read it with through that lens. But what if the Bible is the true thing and everything else you've been taught is maybe incorrect? Exactly. And, you know, they, that's one thing about Little Season is what does it say in Revelations 20? That Satan was loose a little season to deceive the nation. So he's going to deceive you, change history, change everything, right? So everything in like the letters you're saying. So, you know, the New Testament is a collaboration of letters written from the apostles to the churches because the time was at hand. And they're in preparations of the end coming, like, you know, First John 2.18. When he says that this is the last time, I believe when he said that this is the last time, that Nero Caesar was actually on the throne when he said that. But not only that, they say John the Revelator wrote Revelations in 95 AD. If that were true, then John's visions were not accurate and somehow it made it in the Bible. Because when John wrote Revelations, the churches that were in Asia Minor were in Asia Minor. They, they were there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. it's, it's that uncharted territory. It's like, well, when did this happen? But you start looking into it and you find out, oh, crap. There was an 18-month period when the sun went out. And in the book of Histories of Wars, it's written yeah. that when the sun went out for 18 months, there was massive pestilence. Men were not free of any kind of death. There was massive uh, wars and rumors of wars. And you're like, wait a minute. Why did I not get taught about this? You know, and then you, you learn about um, Josephus writing about Jesus coming on the clouds and destroying the Romans. So like, why didn't I learn about this? He also wrote about the crucifixion of Jesus. So this one guy... This one person wrote about the crucifixion of Jesus. He wrote about um, the Roman Empire, all the Jews being destroyed, and Jesus coming. So it's like, he, I, he's pretty trustworthy in my opinion, you know? Well, well, jo Josephus is often cited as people who defend the Bible. So Because Josephus wrote the Antiquity of the Jews, and he, he's a first century Jewish historian, Jewish Roman historian, and he obviously confirms basically the Bible's accurate. So some people always wonder, like, how can we trust that this is is accurate? Well, he, the antiquity of the Jews goes through almost all based on the, t the second temple period of what the Jews believed to be true at that time. And then obviously goes in the historic things with the Jewish Roman war. But yeah, so he says that 1.1 million Jews, only Jews died in that war. So we don't, I don't know how many Romans died, but based on what, if you go look up the stats, they said there was a hundred million people in the world at that time. I mean, I don't know if that's accurate, yeah. but if it is, you're talking over 1% of the whole population of the whole world died in this one war. One and that is, I mean, how, how crazy is that? I mean, that's like, that's hard to believe. But what's interesting about it is, so a lot of people, what, what's often gets disputed is Matthew 24, when Jesus says the temple is going to be destroyed. And then so the apostles immediately ask him, when will this, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And so some people think like it's two separate dialogues, but if you think about it, it's kind of like, I believe this, this is, this is my belief and this is, could be interpretation thing. But when Jesus tells the, the Pharisees that their house is going to be left desolate in Matthew 23, and then he goes right in to talk about the temple being destroyed, he uses the word desolate. And then he starts quoting from Daniel, which again, it's interesting. Daniel says in Daniel 12, four, that he's told to seal up the book till the times of the end. Then Jesus is quoting from it when he's there. Okay. And then, so when he tells the apostles that it's going to, the temple is going to be destroyed, they immediately ask him those, those three questions. So it's kind of like they made the connection that the destruction of the temple is the end. Like that is the end. So like that, that he knew they, they understood them, those events to be together. Because again, if Daniel's talking about the abomination of desolation, they knew that that's what Jesus meant. So when he asks them that, so he starts telling them all the signs and then he tells them that, Truly I, tell, like, uh, truly, I tell you that this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. And I said, I've told you this. I'll continue to say this. It would be so much easier for me to just to say, OK, the abomination of desolation happened, but Jesus did not come back because I could. A lot of people would say, OK, you can make a very good historical case. But Jesus didn't leave me that option to say that only yeah. one of those things happened or just part of the things happened because he said all of these things would happen. And like I said, that's how you know that that's why the apostles were so sure when they were writing letters that this time is happening. Actually, what you, you quoted first John 2 18, when he's saying, you know, that the Antichrist is coming still many Antichrists have come. And now we know it's the last hour. So because like when Jesus says the signs will be 
there'll be many false prophets and false Christ. That's one of the signs of the end. And so John is basically saying, yes, the, we know it's the last hour because this is our, this is happening. And as Jesus said, it would. And, you know, that was also in Paul's first letter to Thessalonians. He was writing about the coming of the Lord, you know, the harpazo, mm -hmm. which has been totally s screwed up. Besides that, he was telling them, you know, that there will be false Christ, you know, that or actually. I mean, he had to write a second letter to the church of Thessalonians just because when Paul wrote the first letter, they were over there saying he's in the secret chamber. He's in the desert. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 24, when they say he's in the secret chamber, do not believe him. When they say he's in the desert, do not believe him. Also, the Pharisees' house is being made desolate. Like I sent you all that verse from James. It was so funny last night reading James. And it said that oh, yeah. all, you, all you foolish people, all you rich people have stored up your treasure that's rotting because we are in the last times. You, you basically spent your life storing up money for the end to come upon you, you know? Um, and Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. And there, there never was a third temple. It, it's never, you know, we could speculatively say, yeah, we're the third temple, the body. We get that, right? But when Daniel wrote about the, the temple, there was no second temple. He was writing about the second temple. Then right when Jesus said that the temple will be destroyed, he died shortly after, not died, he died and rose again, shortly after the temple was destroyed um, and, and everything was made desolate. Exactly the way he said, exactly, word for word, not one stone left upon another. Yeah, again, it's like the biblical number of 42, the fact that it was like 40 years from when Jesus said that was going to happen, like it all happened. I mean, yeah, and so the, a lot of people don't realize when he says, when he's telling people to not go out to the wilderness or go to the inner chambers, it's because because people were claiming to be, because that's the thing, and this is interesting, is that even the people who crucified Jesus knew the Daniel prophecies, they, prob, they, they knew the 70 weeks. So that's one of the reasons they were fighting so hard against the Romans, because they believed the Messiah was coming to them to save them during that war. So they knew the timing of it. So... A lot of people were saying that they were the Christ. And so they were taking people out to the wilderness and robbing them, taking them to the inner chamber and robbing them. Don't believe them. And so that's what he meant by it, like saying, like, there's going to be people trying to purport to be me in this time to take advantage of people. And that's the interesting part is like the zealots who were fighting so hard against the room. They were the ones who were also desecrating the temple inside of it, making it abominable. I mean, all that stuff happened, and it's like you said, it's, it's a miracle. Like, even, like, the crazy part is understanding, like, what you're saying about Thessalonians, where people know that Paul was writing this because people thought they'd missed the day of the Lord. You know, one thing that Paul never says, oh, don't worry, it's not going to be for a long time from now. No one you said know that I mean? ever. Like, like, he, like, he knew that it was going to be right now, so, like, he was trying to, he was trying to correct them, but he was, he was, yeah, he did not say that. He didn't say, Oh, we got a couple thousand years. You know, a day is a thousand years to the Lord. So, I mean, it could be many thousands of years from now. R.C. R. C. Sproul had a great uh, sermon about this when he was saying that, okay, so a lot of people recognize the signs Jesus gives about false prophets, wars, rumors of wars, um, earthquakes in various places, things like that. Those, those certain signs in over a couple thousand years are not very specific. And you could, it could be any time. And it actually, and that's why every year people are says, hey, look at all the earthquakes. Hey, look at the rumors of wars. Hey, look at these people claiming to be uh, messiahs and whatnot. Okay, so, but in the times of the apostles, those signs make a lot more impact on when they know what's about to happen. Because again, in a short period of time, okay, now you understand like the, these signs, this is what he said was going to happen. But over the course of 2000 years, yeah, I mean, that, that, that is not very specific into the times of now. And that's why people have to, then they have to really allegorize all the other things he said. I wonder what he means by like flee to the, the mountains of Judea. I mean, like we don't live in Judea. What about, um, what about like, why would it be hard to travel in the wintertime in, in 2024? You know, yeah. like why would we, why would it matter if it was a th Sabbath day? We don't, we don't even know what the Sabbath day is anymore, man, because the calendar switched up. And yeah, if we're taking it, Based on what they said, basically we're saying that every we're we're saying Peter lied, John lied. We're saying that all these apostles are the boy who cried wolf because every single one of them said every single New Testament book you'll read when you reread it with, with this. If you even allow the thought that maybe this is true, if you read it now, every single apostle when they wrote their letter said, "Hey, 
the time's coming, the time's upon us. So we're basically saying that all of them are full of crap, that they're the boy who cried wolf. If that's true, why even believe what the Bible says? If that is true, if what if, if Jesus never came, why even believe the apostles? Because they told him it was now, and we're 2,000 years yeah. later and it didn't happen, supposedly. Yeah, they, they certainly were saying it was imminent. Again, so like, how, why would they, so why would they believe it was imminent if, like, so what would be the reason they'd believe it's imminent? So you could say that, you could say the apostles did, well, again, I don't think you could say that the apostles lied, because I, I think you could say that the apostles believed it. You'd had to say Jesus lied, because that's why, I would say that's why they believed it, because they didn't know when, but they knew it was going to happen in their lifetime. Yeah. So that's the, that's sure. the main reason. Again, mm-hmm. so that, that's why you see Paul would say, I think you sh- if you came to Christ now, you should remain as the state you're in. If you're married, stay married. If you're not married, do not get married. Like, like God called you as you are right now, and then that's, that's the state he wants you in because th- he, like, he doesn't know exactly when. Like, nobody knows the day or the hour, and Jesus says that. But they do, not, they do know this season. They know it's going to happen in their lifetime. And to me, that, that much is very clear. So, again, the, the apostles believe what Jesus said. And again, that's why you have to go into the books of, book of Revelation. You look at the letters to the seven churches. Do you think that they believed it when John sent them those letters? They said that he saw a vision of Jesus, and this, is, this was Jesus' message to them. He tells them to repent. He tells them he's coming back quickly. He tells them he's coming, coming with a sword if they don't repent. Do you think they believed him? And if they did believe him and he didn't come back, what does that mean? Yeah, it would, it would have been washed out. It, it would well, have it been. Would, it, well, it would have. But you know what would ha- you know what would happen? I could tell you this right now. What would happen? Christianity would not be where it is today. It would not be. Yeah. It would not be the biggest religion in the world because if if all the things didn't happen that were said to have happened, then why would the church have grown? Yeah, it, it'd be completely washed out, gone. It'd be it'd be uh, mythology. You know what I mean? It'd be it'd be basic mythology, man. Um, and then yeah, like, can you imagine? Can, can you imagine like the people who knew the people in that church, those churches, and they're waiting on. So when's your God coming back? So yeah. all that stuff you, you've been telling us all this stuff, you believe it, right? And then people would have walked away and they said all that stuff that they said never happened. <laughs> but but that's not what happened. That's not how the story ends, is it? Yeah. For some reason, I, I think this is a more significant thing than people even. It's like we've grown up in this world that that obviously has deified Christ for good reason. Okay. But he wasn't at some point, a lot of people obviously were just saying he was a false prophet or he was some guy who just got killed by the Romans. But at one point, the Romans who obviously killed him decided, Hey, let's change the whole calendar. And now we're going to have a time that's, it was Anno Domino. It's the, the year of our Lord. That's, that's going to be one AD. And then before that's going to be before Christ. So that was like around 500 ish AD. They did that. I mean, they sh- the whole world changed the calendar on like how we view dates because of him. And this is after he died. And if he didn't rise again, if the things he said didn't come true, like how is that? How did that happen? Yeah, it's it's so clear too when Jesus is being put on the cross, you know, with Pilate. Don't you know I had the power to let you loose? You know, and he he basically mm-hmm. he wrote on the cross. Uh, you know, Jesus, he wrote it in Greek and Latin, Jesus, king of the Jews. And they said, whoa, 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 no, no, take take the king of the Jews off. Just say he says, he says, I wrote what I wrote. He said it so plainly. Pilate mm-hmm. knew that Jesus was God in the flesh. Pilate knew, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that's so cool too, going with your calendar of like, you know, that we know that Jesus Christ was God come in the flesh. And now we also know he did exactly what he said he was going to do when he said he was going to do it, not 2000 laters. And there's a huge detriment, dude. There's a huge detriment to the church in believing. Um, so just the fact of believing that he has not come, you know, first off, like an example, right? Why would they? So back when the Euphrates was to be dried, it was dried so the kings could travel over but with to fight with swords. But now we have nukes, missiles, rockets, jets, planes, etc. We don't need the Euphrates to be dry. That's silly. But now mm. looking at it, everyone's looking for the wrong thing they're looking for an antichrist they're looking for a mark of the beast they're looking for israel to be surrounded so basically they're looking at all this stuff 
So when it really does go down, they don't know we're in Revelations 20. They don't know they're going to lead us to attack New Jerusalem and the camp of the saints. They're going to believe the camp of the saints are demonic because they are looking for the Antichrist, for the Mark of the Beast, and for the other stuff. So there's, there's a huge detriment, and they're, they're very at risk for being deceived, especially with Israel right now, right? Whether we say Israel is or isn't um, that location, we know the remnant was basically gone. There, there most definitely is uh, Jewish DNA, Hebrew DNA, and most people probably on the earth because uh, genetics through time. But right now, people who, and I know you don't get into politics and stuff, right now, Everyone's watching Israel, and they're praising genocide, which is the opposite of what Jesus taught, by the way. Don't yeah. pay evil mm -hmm. with evil, and he said, don't, it's not tooth for tooth, eye for eye. So they're actually thinking what's happening right now is biblical. They're, they're like, oh yeah, Israel's going to be surrounded, but we cannot turn against Israel, because if we do, we'll be destroyed. This was Zechariah 12 to 14, and uh, all, these, all these books, it talks about Israel being surrounded, but those who go against Israel will be attacked. So they're all watching Israel right now, and they're actually praising the genocide that's happening happening but there, there is a great thing that's going to be coming in, in our lifetime and i believe it's soon rather than later i think it's really soon and i think that's why god's waking people up to this fact that we, where we live but i think um most people are going to end up dying in the fact that they're praising or even encouraging and living in the innocent blood in the innocent slaughter of people and i think that's going to uh, trip a lot of people up while this deceiving thing comes well, it's, it is interesting that the end times viewpoint, and I know why people root on an Antichrist. I mean, it's like the Christian church is rooting for an Antichrist to come because they believe it coincides with Jesus coming back. So you could you could imagine that like in that view, you do welcome kind of certain atrocities and you kind of turn a blind eye to it. It's like, well, this is supposed to happen anyways. Therefore, we won't speak up about it. And it's like, I was there. I mean, I, I was there thinking the same thing of like, well, I hope this world ends soon. This place sucks. Um, I don't really like it here anymore. And if it ended and God took me away from it, I'd be happy however, however it happens. I mean, that's not the worst attitude because you think like, I'm willing to suffer in order for Jesus to come back. But at the same time, like, yeah, I did. There's a bit of a gallows, like you're, you're wanting for that, that, that wicked time because you, you mm -hmm. think it coincides with that. But what if, that time is not the the rapture is not coming and it's just the wicked times are coming and you're rooting it on and then you're going to be left at the end of your life with like your children possibly your children like looking around like My goodness yeah like what did you like like is it, what happened yeah and it's like you can imagine you can imagine like even the the parable of the soil and and things like that where like you were hoping for this thing and you're like you could get disillusioned because you're like wow all the wicked things seem to be happening but who's the antichrist <laughs> is the antichrist coming yeah. in like all these bad things and you allow that oh because we're supposed to support israel as well even though israel is not a place israel was was jacob and his his descendants were israel i was i think what's funny is we're talking about like who are the people in the land very interestingly i'm reading through the old testament again and i'm like i've been doing this chronological thing so i'm like i'm in the book of i just actually got into esther but i read nehemiah and ezra and so this is after the captivity they start to go back and rebuild the temple what's funny is like there's families already coming back that can't prove that they're related to anybody you know like in in, the, in those books where there were certain people who, they couldn't take part in certain ceremonial things because they could not prove their lineage and this is like you know so this is what 500 years before jesus and so now we're 2000 years after that. And it's like, so how many more, how many fewer people could prove that they're related to Judah or Benjamin or Gad or Naphtali? You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine actually being able to pull out your family tree and say, <laughs> roll out the scroll that's like, you know, a mile long and say, oh, look, see, see, I'm related to so-and-so. And it's like, how many people do you think can do that? And it's funny so too, get, man. That's so silly though. You know what I mean? It's silly to think that. It's, it's funny, too, because, like, there's so many, you know, the Bible tells us not to be in contentious about genealogies and law and yep. whatsoever. Amen. But I think it's so mm -hmm. funny. In the book of Exodus, if if one person would just come and be circumcised and take part in the Passover, they would actually accept them as a Hebrew in the book of 
Exodus, man. Like, so anyone yeah. could actually become a Hebrew in the book of Exodus by partaking in their in their statutes and their laws, and they would actually accept them when when, when Moses, you know, when they're in the wilderness. But so they would accept them. But now we have so much contentious about contention about oh, I'm I'm a Hebrew Israelite, or I'm like you know, and there's no way one anyone could even know. And this actually wants me makes me want to talk about the orphan trains, man, because. You know, in, in in reality, we are all the offspring of the cabbage patch, the orphans. That's where we come from. We come from the people whose parents Possibly. were slaughtered because they knew about Jesus. Well, hey, before you before we get onto that, let's see, let's talk about let's hold that thought for a second. I want to ask you a question though. So as we've kind of like said, we you know, thirty minutes in, basically we've we've talked nothing but scriptures of like this is this is why we believe what we believe. Like, so how have you taken to be called like a heretic after you've like, you finally like, you know, cause I know that there's a lot of people say that, oh, the, you know, JT has gone off the deep end. Oh, he's got too conspiratorial now. Like, you know, like, how have you dealt with that? Cause I know that I know for you, I know you specifically got called out before we even talked. Like when we first started talking about this, there was like some big TikTok accounts, like saying, mark us, block us, do all the things in like, these people are not preaching the same gospel. They don't, they don't know the gospel of Christ anymore because they're believing in a heavenly city, a heavenly Jerusalem and all this kind of stuff like that. And the fact that, that maybe we, maybe the world's been deceived by the devil. So, so yeah. how, so how, so how have you taken that? Like, how has that been, been a difficult thing for you? Exactly the way the Bible says, man, uh, you know, you are blessed when you can partake in the sufferings of Christ, and most of the world will not accept you if you know the truth. So if all the Christians in the world love you, you're doing something wrong, in my opinion. Yep. And also, mm -hmm. you know, when I first started teaching, I was I was already hated, as were you, right? Because I was like, there is, like, you all read the same Bible as me, but there is no preacher rapture. It says over and over again. At the I last said that moment. a lot. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get a lot of friends from from saying that. Yeah. No. <laughs> and then you know the once saved always saved. You know we can live wickedly as long as we want to, and we're we're good to go. When the Bible says the opposite, right? The Bible says to continue in the faith without wandering, for He is faithful. That promise in twenty six ten twenty six Hebrews it says that if you haven't you have need of endurance, that if you continue in the faith, you'll receive the promise. That basically not that we save ourselves. We're not saved through works. We're saved through faith only. Only God's grace saves us. We know that. But well, mm -hmm. but also we know that if we're really a Christian, that it'll be reflected in what we do. So knowing, like actually following the Bible um, gets gets a lot of hate these days because the massive churches, they will, they, they promote sin in the, their own churches. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, come on the stage, you wicked promoters. And so it's like, well, yeah, mm -hmm. they look, the, they look, they at least look the other way. And I think that's what like, I'm sure that like, you know, as well as I know that if all I did was point out evil stuff in movies and I actually didn't talk about like, like eschatology and I didn't, you know, argue with people about like the following the commandments versus grace and faith or once saved, always saved, where you, when's the rapture, all this kind of stuff. I could, I could try my best to not alienate people. I could keep my beliefs to myself, but, but again, we wouldn't be saying what's true if we, we did that. And I do, I do, I do like that. It's like, woe to you when all men speak well of you. For their fathers spoke well of the false prophets. So it's like, yeah, the, those people are the ones preaching the popular message, not the ones who are, the ones you get mad at are the probably ones like more like, hey, do you see what they did to God's prophets? They beat them, they stoned them, they killed them. Mm -hmm. And actually, man, um, I've, I've actually been really surprised with the results too. Because I mean, I remember the first time I had a massive onslaught against me on TikTok and it was when I said that, if you died and stand before God's throne and you did not take any souls with you, I don't think he's going to let you win. I said, he's not going to let you win. And they're like, how could you say that? Because Jesus said that, you know, I'll abide, abide in me as I in you. Um, you'll abide in me if you obey my commandments. The first commandment was to love people like, you know, like he loves us to lay mm -hmm. like them for a friend. Yeah. If you love people, you'll warn them of what's coming. Also, Ezekiel 33, if you don't warn people of, of the sins that they're committing, their blood will be upon your own head. So it's, in my world, mm. if you're not trying to spread the gospel or win souls, what do you, you know, you're lukewarm then at, at that point. You're, what what good is that salt of it? You're the salt of the world. What good is that salt of it lost its savor? It's then good for nothing to be tried under the foot of man. You know, so that salt is good for nothing if it's not spreading the gospel. That's why we're here is to spread the gospel, the good news. So that was the first onslaught. But when I started opening up with this um, stuff, 
all I'm doing is giving them the facts, right? I give them the Bible, and then I give them history. And I've actually had a, a very good response. People are actually, like, listening. I'm saying, don't believe me. Believe Jesus. Read. Don't believe right. me. Believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. Read it. Amen. Make your own, yep, and pray. And a lot of people are actually listening. They're, they're actually accepting it. So, um, so far, so good is the answer. Well, well I'm going to back you up on that because I'm going to go into John 15, starting with verse 5. He says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in I and him, he is it that bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, and he has thrown, he's thrown away like a branch that withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown in the fire. Tr you have to be fruitful. Like so, if you're in him, oh. you will you you'll you'll produce fruit. And obviously, trees that don't produce fruit are good for nothing, or they're thrown into the fire. So like that's like the whole idea of like. Isn't it interesting, like, when people talk about the fig tree parable, when Jesus talks about Matthew 24, what does he do almost, like, a couple of chapters before that, what do they do on the way to Jerusalem? He goes over, and he sees a tree, it's a fig tree, and he's like, where's the fruit? And he's like, so he curses the tree and kills it. So, like, the tree that didn't, and it was funny, because it was even saying, like, that it really wasn't in season, but Jesus cursed the tree anyways, because that's the point, is like, that if it, it what good is a fig tree that produces no figs? It's that, good for nothing. That's good. It's good man. for it's it's only it's, it's only good for firewood at that point. Yeah, and that's exactly what I think it's uh late in John fifteen and sixteen. It's like you know if if the branches in me bear not fruit, they're cast off, gathered by men, thrown into the fire. So exactly, mm -hmm. man. Um, you know, we'll bear much fruit if we abide in Jesus, and if we don't abide in Jesus, we will be cast off. You know, even the lukewarm church. You know, like we're talking about the churches in Revelations two and three. Like, I will come at you with the sword in my mouth. Like, I'm gonna come at y'all. The people who are yeah. in the church, I'm gonna come after y'all. So it's like, you know, right. we, we know that um, he's a holy God. You know, there there is there is room for there, there's room created by the blood of Jesus for our mistakes. But he's a holy God. You know, what can we yeah. expect from a holy God? But holiness and righteousness. And that's why it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God because we live in the flesh and uh, yep. everything of the world is evil. You know what I mean? Amen. Well, I think that's the, the the point of like working out your salvation with fear and trembling. And it was interesting. Me, me and the wife had a conversation like this. It was like, have you ever noticed somebody who's so sure that they, they wouldn't have a problem standing for God right now? And I'm like, and I was like, I feel like that the people who are a little more uncertain about how they're, if they, you know, am I, am I really ready? I feel like that is the attitude you really want. I mean, I know they say perfect love casts out all fear, but I mean, like at the same time, it's like we all know that our own inner, you know, kind of like struggles and we're trying our best to obviously through the Holy Spirit and God's help to get rid of that because we're always testing our flesh. Oh, like, am I doing these for the right reasons? Even like doing stuff like this. Oh, is this a pride thing? Am I doing this because I like the attention or is it because I'm doing it for God? And like always checking your intentions. Because it's better for you to, to ask the questions of yourself than be one of those people going to the throne all, all fat and cocky saying, oh, yeah, yeah obviously God's going to welcome him. It's like an idea of like that when Jesus says, do not take the place in honor at the, at the feast, right? Take the lowly position because it's better to get moved to the front than it is to say, hey, what are you doing sitting up here? <laughs> like You haven't done anything. Go get to the back or the whole. I said, I think the most terrifying verse in the whole Bible is the. Many will come, you know, many will come to me on that day, and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I prophesy in your name? And they'll say, be gone from me. I never knew you like that. So there's people that think that they're saved, obviously, at the end, they were not. And, yeah. and like I said, if that's not the, if that doesn't actually just kind of wake you up and make you say, we don't know exactly what the standard is. And I think that that's the way it's supposed to be. Like, we don't really, you know, you ever notice that the Bible really never says, and then so-and-so goes to heaven when they died. Yeah. We don't know. It was just like, they died. Like, we don't, re we don't really know. I mean, obviously there's inferences you can take, but I think that's maybe the way it's supposed to be. That's like the, the standard is the, the Holy Spirit convicting you and moving you from glory to glory, trying to get you to sanctify you and yeah. And, and make you more like him. And so the, the closer you get to, to God, the more his brightness, you know, ex basically exposes the, the problems in you. You think you've got it. If you think you've got it all figured out, that to me is like that whole idea of like, was it the lawyer who's saying, at least I'm not like that tax collector over there. And that guy's just saying, God have mercy on me. 
Yeah. Who's getting who's getting into heaven in that scenario? The guy who's sure that he's better than that guy? No. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous. It's the opposite. It's the, it's the opposite. It, it's very dangerous. And yeah, the closer you get to God, the more is revealed. And like, you know, I, I used to say that, you know, the the closest person to God that exists, you know, they they can see more fault in themselves than the most wicked can see in themselves, you know. So even the most meek and humble pastors, they see pride themselves that no one else can even see because they are that close to God and they have that much of light shining on them that everything's exposed. So it's like we, we are constantly trying to level up and get more and more out of flesh, more into the spirit. And like you were saying, you know, like, woe to those who want the day of the Lord. There, there is never a day like it, never, never will one again come like it. Yeah. So they're like, mm -hmm. I'm ready for this. Are you, are you really ready? Because I mean, right now, could right. you even give up employment for God? If he told you to give up your job, are you going to say, I, God will want me to quit? Or a lot of people in 2020, they, they took that thing, right? They said, well, God mm -hmm. would want mm -hmm. me to take this thing so I can keep my job. When God right. didn't said that, he said, don't love your life to the death. You know, he said, those who lose their life for my sake will gain it. So and I he also God, said, don't, don't, and he also said, don't worry about what you eat and what you wear. Like, yeah. I can provide these things for you. Mm -hmm. And exactly, man. I think that all people who are like trying to summon up these end times and like, oh yeah, let's get this done. I'm ready. Though I think those are the least like, I think those are the least understanding. And that's all with all respect. I used to be like that. I used to be like, bring yeah. it on, take my head, you know, but I think those are with the least understanding, not understanding that. You know, you're going to be put through the worst things that you can imagine. I mean, flesh ripped from your body as you're whipped and stabbed and spit on and kicked. And just the worst thing yeah. you can imagine will come upon you. And um, it's just like that complex that for some reason that we are we are good. That complex that, you know, like well, we could stand before a throne of God and say anything other than Jesus for the reason of our salvation. Because there's some people who will get there. Why should I let you in? Well, you know, I gave money to the church. I uh, did this. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, it's a danger. Pride's dangerous, and so is self righteousness. Amen, brother. Yeah. So let's talk. Let's start talking about that. So, so the orphan train. So yeah. Let's. So it's an insane period in our in our lifetime, or not in our lifetime, before our lifetimes, or the stories of the 19th century. And to me, it's kind of like this is such a insane century where again i remember talking about this with david shane and, and ricardo from content for the faith or from uh, question the narrative and i was saying like once i started to get very curious about history before all this stuff and i started to like watch western movies and and things about that happened back then like shows about history about like the rockefellers and the people who kind of built america and vanderbilts and i was like man how did all this stuff happen in this century it's like it seems like a lot of stuff happened in this this hundred years and then i realized wait a minute it's a lie like nothing there's no way that the whole country could have got built in this century meanwhile getting burned down at the same time and then and then just seeing stuff where i i almost thought when i saw the orphan train stuff i thought that has to be ai like those pictures can't be real like the the pat the cabbage patch stuff the with the world fair or not the world fair but even like the um like the carnival type stuff with like the incubator babies and stuff i said that that can't be real. Like, so when did you wake up to that? Like, did, like, yeah, what was your first thoughts when you started to hear about these little kind of very odd, odd things in our, in our past? It didn't make the most sense until up until recently, but I've been looking into the Cabbage Patch Kids and them uh, breeding children and selling children off in these, you know, these trains coming and they, they would have these owners put around America you know, it, it's such a deep topic, man, because all the buildings that they kept trying to set on fire that don't really burn and the founded buildings and just everything was odd, right? It's like we were given this amazing land with these amazing buildings and these people came in all of a sudden out of nowhere within this short port part of history. Everyone just gathered. Everything is done, supposedly. But then there's these people and they each have 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 children under their watch. Like, there's one family, you know, like, so that's insane. And then you find out that there's postcards and letters and pictures of them selling the children. And then you find out about these insane asylums, and you're, wait, you're like, wait a minute. Massive insane asylums where religious fanatics go, then you have all these yeah. orphans. I'm like, so hold on, who's being thrown in the insane asylums? Yeah, and that's how we have the orphans, you know, but it yeah. didn't all click until the, the little season came up and we're like, 
oh, they, these are people who had memory of the Millennial Kingdom. These are people that are aware of what happened. I mean, that again, I think that that's one of the reasons why, like, the scriptures obviously are best case. But the second best case is when you start looking, you know, you start taking little pieces of, like, conspiracies here and there, and you don't know really what to, like I said, you kind of put the, the Tataria stuff, old world stuff to the side, mud flood stuff. Like, it doesn't make sense to what I'm talking about and how relevant it is. Why does it matter? I mean, I'm interested in it. I was very curious about it, but like, I was like, but why does it matter? And like, how could I make it? You know, I think probably like you and I, if, we, if we're being completely honest, we make videos that we find interesting, but we also want the audience to be interested in. It. It's kind of like, so why would people care about this? You know, other than this kind of like, unless you had a page that's very kitschy, that's like, it's all about old world or mud flood. You know, yeah. I think, I think because we start talking about people are like, oh, you guys getting on that bandwagon to try to get like views and stuff. So I didn't want to do that, but like, I am interested in it. But then I started to understand like, wait a minute, it, there does seem to be some kind of a massive cover up of something. And I don't know what it is, but I'm trying to, to look into that. And so what's interesting so to, to start this off, if you guys have not heard this, I'm sure if you listen to me, you've heard a little bit about it, but the earliest pictures we have of like these big cities are like from like the 1850s. And they're these massive cities and they and they look very similar than they do today, actually, except for more grain looking massive buildings. And there's like hardly any be people out on the streets, like nobody. And sometimes in, in many cases, it looks like muddy streets and it's like, okay, so where are all the people at? It's very odd to have a giant city like that with no people. And then when you, when you start to see people later in like, sometimes you have these early or like these early videos of like these cities like Paris and London and all of the people are dressed really nice, like dressed to the nines, like aristocrat looking people. And then you're like that. There's just something so off about this. Like I, I can't really kind of put my, put my finger on it, but something's really off. And then you start to see the orphan train thing and you're like, okay, so wait a minute, these things have to be related. And that's why I started to make the connections. Like, wait a minute, the people who are dressed like that, were not working in factories. Right. <laughs> they weren't working in fields. They weren't working in factories. These people look very rich. So maybe the, the, the pictures with nobody in them in these big cities, maybe the, the orphan trains were related to the fact that they needed people to go work in the factories. And then if you go look in more old pictures, kids working in factories, kids working in fields, kids doing all these random jobs. And then you see the insane asylums. Okay. So there's, I think they said between like, 1860 and 1929 in America, there's 250,000 kids on orphan trains. Again, the population is much bigger now. That number is huge then. It's even, well, I mean, it's, it's huge now. It's way bigger then. So and then there was 150,000 people in a same asylums. Okay, so the math actually makes sense. Like that, were these the parents of these kids? And then the kids get shipped all around the, all around the world all around the country, at least here. And I know, I'm, I'm, I know this was like, was a worldwide thing. And I'm like, and then you see like the things. So there's, there's like zero insane asylums. Now there was like 1500 of them in like 1900. There was like, there's like zero orphanages now, like all these things that are just, they don't have them anymore. And if you go look at the buildings that were orphanages, look, look at, if you're, if you're ever bored, go look up prisons, orphanages and Salem house. And they're all these massive castle style looking buildings. You ever notice that? Yeah. It seems it seems very clear that, to me at this point that those buildings were repurposed because you would not build a castle and then turn it into a prison. You would not build a castle and then turn it into a sane asylum or an orphanage because they don't look like that. Like, why would you spend that much money doing that unless it was already there and they needed to use for it? And that's what they chose to use it for. Inversion, man. Inversion. Everything, the dark ages were the light ages and inversion because we have all these things. And it's so funny. I was talking to David Shane earlier on the phone. And I was like, you know, what's funny is like, you know, with the building of uh, the second temple of Solomon, there were no tools heard. It was demons building it. So what was building these massive scale buildings, tens of thousands of square foot out of one solid material other than angels or frequencies, some kind of thing from God, you know? And they turn these beautiful buildings, man, these beautiful, beautiful glorified buildings, and they, they, they invert it. They automatically use it for, for slaughter, for torture, for, you know, anything for Satan, because, again, it's Satan's season. So everything is demolished and evil, and um, what else do they do, right? They take these beautiful buildings, they put 
paganistic signs all over all of it. And they torture people in them, of course, right? What else is right. Satan going to do in this season? Yeah, you know, I was like, this. I don't know if you looked into this, but I was, it's funny, I was, I was hitting up my buddies, uh, uh, Paul Stobbs from Understanding Conspiracy and my buddy Vitaly from Alpha Talks. And I was watching this documentary and it was about um, the Russian Revolution and kind of like into World War One times, like, or actually World War Two. I think they said 60 million like Russians died during this time. Mm. 60 million. I said, you know, what's interesting is that if you guys are aware of Tataria, I don't believe everything's Tataria. But again, like that's that's a that's a name that gets used thrown around a lot about like to describe the architecture. There was a Tatarian Empire. And it's funny. I got this map behind me that actually has like a Tataria on it. Well, where Tataria was was Russia. So what we're told is that like people like Stalin and like during the Russian Revolution, all these communists killed all these poor farmers or f- farmers. What if they weren't farmers? Like what if they were this remnant of people who were from this previous time that had knowledge of the time before that like to wow. me, it's like to me, it's kind of like how can you really think about like, is there anything more demonic than killing that many people? I mean like that, I mean – like we in the West are so sheltered. And again, this is why we can, we can look at genocide happening across the world and just be completely unbothered by it. Go about our day. Like we talk about all the things that have happened in America and how bad they are and how, how this place is so bad. And then you think about a time in history where 60 million people, like in a generation get murdered. And then you don't, and you just think, Oh, well, commies are bad. Okay. I agree. Communism is bad. But I mean, like you're talking about a different level of bad. You're talking about a a level of evil that's only if only for like the devil that I don't think people are really capable of doing something like that. It to me, to me, it reeks of a cover up. Something very bad happened in that place. And again, I think that that's what that's what I see is that there was something that happened during the 1800s where I said, if you believe kind of the mud flood story. And even if you don't believe, if you're not a Christian, you don't believe in the whole little season idea, you have to believe that people like the controllers or whoever you want to call them literally burned cities down, murdered people, threw people in the same asylums to hide stuff. They literally burned down the best buildings you've ever seen, that, were, that we've never seen, I guess now, you know, the best buildings ever created in order to hide something. So what could they be hiding? And I, and I think that, I think what seems very clear and obvious, it it's something you could not even imagine. Like it's bigger than you can even imagine, because that's the only reason people would do that, right? Am I wrong? I mean, like you're talking about a worldwide thing that this happened in order to cover up something. And the history books don't write about the reason for all the mud. They don't write about all this stuff. They just say, oh yeah, the yeah Stalin was bad. He was killing like just you know just millions of people just like in his own country for some reason. There, there's just because he was bad. Deeper. Yeah, there's nothing deeper. There's no. This is like the very bottom of the rabbit hole. There, there is nothing deeper than Little Season than what happened in the 1800s and 90s. There is nothing deeper than this because this is uh, it, it explains everything, right? Because everything was a was a move to to get more tr- to to the truth, you know. But and cool, like with Russia too, you know. And Jesus talks about them coming from the north, the east, the west, and the south. The worshiping Zechariah 12 to 14, where or within that period, they're. They're having the millennial reign, and they're traveling to uh, Mount Zion to worship Jesus with the Feast of Tabernacles. And you look at the 1600 map, right? I forget what it's called. You probably know. And you have that Rubus Nigra, but right there in the center, you have Russia. Is that the, is that the, Merc- is that the Mercator map, I believe? I think so. And uh, right in the center of that map, you have this this land, which is not shown to us, but Russia is connected to it. Because Russia, when you go down from Russia, you have the Great Wall of China, right? But it, it's actually deflected. It's the opposite way, right? They, yeah, um, the weird. windows. <laughs> so you have like this Sartarian Empire, then you have the opposite. And it, it, the wall is deflected, but northern of Russia, northern of Canada and Greenland and all these, you actually found find this place, which is this huge mountain that I believe is where John the Revelator stood on see the kingdoms of the world. But it's funny because you're mentioning Russia, you know, and just how like that border goes. But just just north of that, I believe, is where they're actually worshiping God in that piece of tabernacles. But I don't think there's no bottom. I think this is the very bottom. I think if 
you know, first it was like, you know, flat earth and then it, the firmament and then it was, you know, all, but I think this is the very bottom. I think there's nothing left besides this. I think this is the whole thing they want to. I think this is the whole thing. I think there's nothing deeper than this. Well, it, it gives an answer to all the questions about why would they lie? Like, you know, because that's what you always get yeah. asked that, especially like the flat earth stuff. Everyone said, well, why would they lie about that? And it's like, well, what if they were really trying to like distort maps and things like that? Like, you know, to not let you know where certain things are. Um, yeah. What's it, what's interesting again, like I think biblically you could say that the Russia could be Gog. And I think that maybe China, I, I could maybe, I could, might have these backwards, but like Gog would be Russia. Magog is like, like the China area, like the Mongol area, I think would you, would you say? So I'm like, isn't it interesting again? So like if you, in revelation 20, it talks about there's a thousand years and then Satan is let back out to deceive the nations again and gather the nations, Gog and Magog. So what if some of the worst things that ever happened were in the areas where Gog and Magog were supposed to be? And again, like, wow. like you think about the atrocities that even happened in like in Asia, just in Asia, like, like you think about even, I think it was like Pol Pot, like Cambodia and stuff like that. You think about the stuff that happened in China, like, oh, is it Mao Zedong? Like how many people were killed in China? So all these communist, the communist countries just so happen like where they don't care for human life whatsoever. And again, it's like, it's easy to just dehumanize these people and say, oh, well, the communists are bad. But like you, like you're really not thinking about the level of death I'm talking about. We're talking about like, like. I think between Russia and I, I, I'm not sure what they say the death toll is, but I mean, we're talking about like if 60 million people died in like Russia, I'm, I think it's, it's, it might be more than that in China. And so you're talking about these, these areas of the world that are literally represented like by Gog and Magog in the Bible. So could that be a reason where like, this is part of what Satan is literally trying to do to gather people together where like he's wiping out certain, certain, certain people in order to keep certain people and to, in order to control these places. And maybe it is to hide something and maybe it is later to, to gather for a, a giant battle at the end. But because otherwise, yeah, like you really can't wrap your mind around that kind of wickedness, you know, like you're talking about like, the, supposedly these people are atheists, but I mean, again, like people would want to control that many people, but why would they would just murder them? Maybe because they can't control them or maybe because maybe that, maybe because they can't control them and these people might actually say things that are true that 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 we in the West shouldn't we should never know because if we were if we actually knew what happened there, then maybe they this place wouldn't be so deceived and they wouldn't eventually gather together with them. Yeah, and I think um it's a good it's a time for a hard right turn too, like like a super hard right turn. I don't even believe these world leaders are fully human. I believe if we are in little in Satan's little season, like we believe we are. I mean what, again, I'm fully convinced. I'm not going to say Jesus is a liar. I believe what he said, right? So, with this being Satan's little season, who would Satan put in charge? You know, just as the days of, uh, in Genesis chapter 6, there were giants on the earth in those days, and after that, there was abominations in the world in the days of Noah, and the abominations came back, just like the hieroglyphs we see all over the world with the hybrid, the Nagas, uh, hybrid creatures, and mm -hmm. I don't think who, what humans besides of course, to markedly possess humans, who loves the torturing of innocent people? Who just loves torturing and loves killing? Just to markedly possess. I, I would, I, I would almost conclude that all these leaders. I didn't think this at first with global politics, but now I believe that every single one of them is in on it. They're placed directly by Satan, and I would not be surprised. I know it's it's far out there, and it's totally right compared to where we were, but. I think that these are all hybrids. I think every leader is a hybrid, and that's why they're so okay with just massive slaughter. Well, I would say that just based on the idea of, like, the bloodlines are, like, everybody seems to be related that's even in Hollywood and in politics. Like, again, I've, I've mentioned this all the time, as many, many times people will listen to me, is the fact that all our presidents were related except for one of them. Martin Van Buren was the only one who wasn't related. I think Trump, even Biden, they're all related. And they're all related to a king in e England named John Lachlan, who was like literally like the the, the king when they they developed the Magna Carta. Like, you know what year that was? That was like twelve eighty nine or something like that, or something sure. like that. The twelve hundreds, and and then so yeah, so then you realize that the King Charles is related to Vlad then Paler. Well, yeah, George Bush was related to Vlad then Paler. So therefore, 
they're all related to Vlad the Impaler. Okay, so like you're talking about like the the historic Dracula, all, everyone was related to him. And he's like, do you guys believe in that kind of coincidence? Again, like we talk, we're called conspiracy theorists, but it's like you're a massive coincidence theorist if you believe that all that is just whoop. <laughs> that's lucky that they all have. Nope, re- or maybe it's on purpose, and only certain people are allowed to rule. So whether those people are literally just trying to cling to some kind of remnant of some Nephilim bloodline, or maybe the bloodline stronger than I know, maybe, I mean, I think even either they could be physical hybrids or they could just be the fact that these demonic spirits, like their ancestors literally are, you know, possessing them very, very similar to like, if we believe the end times already happened, like the idea of like uh, Polyon gets let out of the bottomless pit and then, you know, they basically use humans as puppets in order to do what they want. And again, like you think like, like almost like the, like in the comic books, like Venom. So Venom is like this demon that inhabits Eddie Brock. And then Eddie Brock becomes more powerful. He becomes more successful in his business. He gets like, it's there's symbiosis between the two entities. And I think that that like is a way of obviously, you know, making it a, a fictional way, but I think that's showing you a real thing that happens. And I think that that's, at the very least, there's clearly demon possessed people running stuff. I think that we just hit on something really good because you mentioned. So we're talking about how like these politicians, maybe they could be hybrids, and you touched on Vlad the Impaler and how they're all related. Yesterday, I got asked, "Are vampires real?" I said, "Yes, just not the way you think." The whole idea of vampire came from Vlad, right? And what do vampires do? They drink blood. Who's drinking blood? Well, the the Nephilim were drinking the blood. They were the blood drinkers. They were eating humans. They would bring, uh, Saturn was a Nephilim um, that they would bring humans to so he could eat them. He, he literally, you know, that, that mythology, we, you mm-hmm. know, but so they're vampires are real it comes from vlad they're all related to vlad every every politician basically right it's true and obviously the the bible tells us to stay away from blood you Mm -hmm. know stay away from the blood do not do not consume blood and so that obviously the demons based on like what we know from enoch cannibalistic you know they're cannibalistic giants they they obviously many of them haven't gone anywhere they have their bloodlust has not ceased and then then you then you hear like in the periphery all the weird stuff that celebrities do with blood, like to keep their skin youthful and stuff like that. And you're like, yeah, like that's that's some vampire stuff. I mean, yeah, is it? It, but again, like this is how this is how mythologies get twisted. It's like it's romanticized now, where it's like vampires are always shown to be evil, but the but Hollywood and people like that do kind of like say, oh, but it's a romantic story, you know? Like it's you know what I mean? Like they try to like. Oh. It's always like the the vampire seducing some beautiful young woman, and it's like that he he does love her, but he's really, you know, he's undead. Yes. What, what what is what is an undead thing? A thing that's not alive, but it's undead. I mean, that sounds like a demon to me. I mean, that that sounds like it fits the yeah. mold of what a demon is. For sure, it definitely sounds like a spirit of the giants, right? Because they're they're not alive, but they're. They're undead, right? They're they're still alive, but they're not alive in the flesh. It definitely sounds like exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that, you know, what's interesting. I started to make the connections to back to the orphan train thing. I was talking to, I I did a live stream with um, old world exploration and we were talking about that and we were saying, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of eerie when you think about it like this is so again, when I first saw the orphan train pictures, I thought that is the weirdest thing. It's like it almost doesn't look real. Like, like I, I can't imagine. Like, could you imagine that being real? But then, if you actually think about it, so like I was saying, you have the 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 creepy images of these empty cities, giant cities being empty, and then you have orphan trains, and you're like, that is that. Like, it's hard to process that. But then you think about it, like during the pandemic, there's pictures of empty cities in America. Like, there's pictures of empty cities all around the world. And then you think about our southern border, where you have trains they're not really orphan trains but you have all these people just coming on these caravans to come here and you could imagine like let's just say like a hundred years from now if somebody like well if gog magog doesn't have before then all the other stuff but i mean let's just imagine if a hundred years takes place and then people see pictures of that and they'd be like that's weird like what are all these people doing and then i was like what if what if so the the orphans were meant to obviously work the jobs that 
the aristocrats would not do, right? Certain factory jobs, menial jobs. What if, which obviously this is not much of a stretch, that the people on the caravans are, are there to work the factory jobs, the menial jobs. What about the rest of us? It's almost like, you could imagine if something happened to us, you know, to like the middle class in America, which it seems like they're desperate to wipe out. It's coming. It's coming. Then what they could what they could do, they could pivot and then they could tell the people who came who 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 walked from Honduras, right? Who don't don't speak any English. Yeah. You could tell them any kind of history about this place that you wanted to. Man, you know? that's crazy. That's you crazy. know what I mean? Like if they started telling them, okay, here's these government schools that you're going to go to and we're going to tell you about all about all about history. And then you're like, <laughs> and then you could say one day, like <laughs> you can imagine like, like as, as nothing new under the sun, one day, one of these guys who's like a descendant of somebody from Honduras said, who built these buildings here? And it's like, oh, well they, we all built all, we obviously built those a hundred years ago. We like, we did it all this certain time. You know what I mean? Like that, well, it's, well, the buildings are there. So therefore who created all this stuff? And it's like, oh yeah, we did it. We could be repeating over and over and over again forever. If, if that was the case. I mean, it, it is so, man, that's crazy. It's such a real possibility. And, you know, I believe that fire is going to rain down from heaven in the next couple of years, but if not, that's definitely the best case, <laughs> next case scenario. Well, I think that that's that, crazy. I mean, I guess that's the, the, the scenario that I just drew out, I believe is a lot of people who believe in the mud flood stuff that don't believe in probably the biblical stuff because they believe that, yeah. that the controllers have the ability to reset the deck like that. Now, I don't believe that. I don't believe they have that, that power to do that, but it doesn't mean they, they're not going to try. I would right. not be, man, I, I see it. I can so clearly see it. Us being replaced, you know, with, with AI and with, with the people from other countries and them being re-educated, just, uh, I could I could see it, dude, like, so clearly. Like, well, it, yeah. It's, yeah, well, so they have to have, like, I can, you can imagine that, like, they could make certain kinds of AI to do certain tasks, but there's certain ones they would have to have some humans to do. And man. And so they would probably need stuff like that. And I think that the thing is, like, they don't want... They obviously don't want people like you and I who question everything they do, <laughs> you know, like, and they don't believe them anymore. I mean, so, so then you take people in there who are grateful to have jobs, any jobs, you know, and then they're taught to be a certain way. And then they're, and they're, and they're spun a, 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 a fantasy about how things came to be and what's, you know, what they're offering, all this kind of stuff. And it, it, it makes, again, it makes, it makes a lot more sense than, than just like the idea that, oh, well, both, you know, like both parties are against illegal immigration, except it happens on mass. They're against like human sex trafficking, even though it happens on mass. And oh, wait, wait, wait. And what we tell these people that we tell them that me and you, we, we tell the immigrants that me and you, JT, are the communist. <laughs> that we right. are the bad people in society. The proletariat. Yep. The proletariat. Yeah. So like so when we're wiped out again, like that, I mean, I think that obviously that's how these these t tyranny works again, like that you change the labels on people and you say that these people are this. That's why I always said like when I was believing a, a tribulation was coming and it doesn't mean tribulation's not coming. It just, it's not going to be the great tribulation. Yeah. That I would say that guys like you and I would never be called Christians. Like if they were persecuting us, we'd be, we'd be called fundamentalists. We'd be, we'd be something else. They would label yeah. you something that was like, because, Oh, cause the Christians are here still waiting on the rapture. It's like the people who claim that, <laughs> that the mud flood was Armageddon or something like that. Those are the people who are going to be locked up in the newness, new insane asylums. I mean, that's the yeah. only way that you can, you can get, a, you could justify throwing people into a, I mean, again, it's like, isn't it a crazy idea that, that we as a society allowed people to get locked up in that kind of mass in order, because they were re religious fundamentalists. It's so easily could happen. Religious even fanatics. Even in even in Jesus' day, like for those people who actually did experience the coming, there were people then who who turned against the Lord and said, "Just because they waited forty years only, and they said, why did my Lord delay His coming?'" And they turned and smited their fellow brethren. So even these yeah. people who just waited yeah. forty years, imagine people who were waiting two thousand years. How easily it'd be for them to turn on people like me and you. Yeah, no, there's yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I do think that there's like the uncovering the stuff of like what, like what they could possibly be doing. I, I guess that's the point is like that when you, you do have a different lens about what 
people what the the elites could be doing about like i said what's what's interesting is that i still believe in them trying to create a one world government because they say that they are yeah but it's not to, to be run by the antichrist i mean it's still like ultimately run by the devil you know like because that's who that's who's in charge of the people who are here but it's interesting like that in a lot of ways and i think this is why us christians should have more common ground even if we don't agree about like the eschatology because if if you know a couple months ago i believed in being a post-trib you know christian i still believed in a one world government was coming so i haven't changed my view on that but now maybe it's not going to be run by the antichrist maybe this is what gather, starts to gather the nations to to go war against the camp of the saints. Yep. And so exactly. that's I don't know if you saw those uh, we were talking about in the videos was like Vitaly was showing me these articles and you go if you guys can look this up. The fact that there's many news articles saying that that World War Three might be fought at like around the North Pole. And you're like, yes. like as somebody who's looking for a third temple in Israel. That news is obviously going whoop, like way over their head. Like, what is it? Like, why could I possibly care? I mean, of course, you're th- like, you would think about it like this as somebody obviously who's very selfish and you just don't, you're only thinking about yourself. Who gives a crap what they do in the North Pole? And right? what about the motherships, man? The motherships that the government says in our galaxy right now, the mothership that I, you know, I was saying that I was saying that, that is how you know cognitive dissonance is a massive real thing because I was saying. When I grew up, if you believed in aliens, you were obviously crazy or stupid. And then, and then one day, it's like I don't. I mean, probably when I was growing up, obviously all the Star Wars and ET and all that stuff, and we're watching the movies. But obviously, that's all fantasy. If you did a poll of like Americans, who do you believe in aliens? I bet you would have been like less than five percent would have said yeah. yes. I bet you if you did it now, I'm not sure if it'd be fifty fifty, but I bet it would be pretty high. Like I, I bet yeah. it would be, I'd be, it'd be way higher. And so the point being was that there was the, the government denied UFOs existed until very recently when again, UFO means unidentified flying object. It does not mean aliens from Mars. So mm-hmm. it just, so obviously UFOs exist. Things that we can't identify in the sky exist. Now, what are they? I don't know. But the idea that we went from like, this is not even a real phenomenon to the government admitting it's real. And then the Pentagon has a guy that works there who is their UFO guy. And he's, he gets in front of Congress and says, there's possibly a mothership in our galaxy or our solar system or whatever he says. And it's, it might be the origination for all these UFOs. And I was like, the idea that that wasn't like one of the biggest stories ever. I it's guess. I, I mean, let's just say, because people are so distracted by their own stuff. And it's like, this guy's saying this. Yeah. So this guy's talking to me on mothership. The, the new, other, other news is talking about World War III being at the North Pole. And then we're showing all these movies like Independence Day and all this kind of stuff like that on a daily basis. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, are these related? Are they, are they, are they sowing the seeds of like, are they telling us without telling us, hey, look over here. <laughs> we're going to be fighting. We're going to be fighting a mothership at the North Pole, maybe. Like, yeah. as insane yeah. as that sounds, yeah, like maybe. I I think so, man. I, I mean, I, I that's that's my best guess is that we in the next coming years. I think it's soon rather than later, just from things that God exposed me to. But I um I think we're gonna be attacked by aliens, by some an, fallen angelic force, by demons. We're gonna be attacked, and while everyone's looking for the wrong things, all the Christians are gonna be looking towards the wrong person. Maybe even a a made-up antichrist that they're going to create themselves in a new world order, I think they're going to lead everyone to fight the North Pole, like the floating Jerusalem or the camp of the saints. And I think that that I think that's the danger of not understanding where we are in the timeline. Because if you believe that Jesus is coming back when this happens and all this stuff happens, then when we go to the North Pole, when not me and you, but when they go to the North Pole to fight the demons you know, they're going to do it and they're going to be destroyed by, by fire because they're going to go fight the mothership. They're going to think it's good. Yeah, it's such a wild idea. You know, I, I started to wonder this, though, that I believe that the Camp of the Saints is obviously in some kind of physical, spiritual place. It's not quite like, because I always just think about how Jesus was saying that, like, you know, the kingdom of the kingdom is not, does not come with observation. So I don't believe, I'm not sure that we could go there and see it. 
or maybe we could. I just I don't I don't really know. So I'm trying to like think about like how is like the army's going to gather around this this thing that's not really quite physical. I I just I guess I don't really know, but I mean it does seem significant about the fact that again like it's very suspect to me that you we can't just go to the North Pole. And it's interesting all these old maps that show like physical land and now there's like there's nothing shown and obviously we know the satellite images are all completely altered and it's like looks like there's just nothing there. Like it's it's weird. I mean, I guess that's all you say. It's, there, there's it's weird. It's it's weird in the way that Antarctica is weird that we can't go certain places. Like, do you really have to make Antarctica off limits? Because it's like not many of us would be going there on our free time anyways. Because like we all like to go sunny, yeah. sunny, sunny, nice beaches, not frigid ones with ice everywhere, glaciers. Something significant is in in the North Pole and in the South South Pole, the South yeah. Line. There's something very, very significant that they wouldn't even let the one percent go there. Besides, very, very, very certain individually handpicked people is like, but what exactly? There's something that came across my uh, phone not too long ago. Project Pegasus. I'm not sure if you heard what it was. They basically said during this, this is a theory, by the way. They said during the eclipse that the governments were actually working with aliens. And uh, they were collecting, because if you watch the eclipse, it was really weird this time. Obviously, the moon was nowhere near there. I believe it to be nodes anyways, but the, the whatever eclipsed the sun actually moved around and went behind the sun. It's it's on video. I've seen that I saw it travel around the sun. They were saying that the alien beings in touch with the government, I believe U.S., China, and Russia, that it uh, went, eclipsed the sun, the spaceship did. And they used all the human's energy, the, the loosh or whatever they used, the human energy, and um, in return, we got, you know, technology from them, and uh, we let them build a base in Antarctica. The funny thing about that is right when the eclipse happened, there was that anomaly that came from Antarctica. And they said, they said, oh, it's a glitch. But at the same time, when it got near Cape Town, Africa, the waves were, like, monstrous. Did you see that? No, I did not see that. It's crazy. And I, I'm starting to wonder. And, and also, now, I actually do believe this theory now because I went on my computer and typed in Project Pegasus, and what do they do when they don't want you to find something? Example, Walt Disney being Frozen. What did they do? Frozen. They made the movie yep. Frozen, so mm -hmm. now when you look up Frozen, Yeah, you Disney. Can't find when them. you look up Disney that's Frozen, yeah, that's what you would see. You would see Elsa and not Walt, Walt Disney uh, all blue looking. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good, man. But Exactly. So when you look up Project Pegasus, you see all this other bullcrap, but you don't see that. And then whatever it did eclipse the sun, it went behind the sun. I watched it wrap around the sun. So I actually believe it. I, I believe that they're in touch with a uh, demonic and, you know, fallen, fallen beings. And I believe that it's a great Have you scene. ever seen uh, David Weiss had a video about the idea that, that like the, the sun that we see is more like the light of the sun and then like the the light source is is in a different kind of like area. It's like um, it's almost like that. He used an example where he, he showed like a, a paper towel, and or like or like I think he used like toilet paper, and he was showing like using like he he created something to cover up the sun, but like the light was behind there, so you could kind of see like you could see the light source behind the sun. Have you ever seen that? So okay, this cool. is this is a real eclipse. Uh, this is the twenty seventeen eclipse, and I filmed it. This is me filming it, and. I don't want to say luckily, luckily, but there was some fog in the sky, some some something that might have come out of the back of an airplane accidentally, right? But which made the sun very easy. You know, it, it dimmed it just enough where it wouldn't blow out your camera. So I was able to mm -hmm. film it, okay? And so I watched this eclipse. This was almost, this is probably, as, uh, it got a little bit more than this, and then that, that was it. It wasn't in totality. One, mm -hmm. we can't see the moon, and two... Yeah, where 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 the heck is the moon? So this is my model eclipse. I have a paper towel hanging, and on the other mm -hmm. side of the paper towel, I have a source light focusing on this, and I have a Snapple bottle cap eclipsing it, blocking mm -hmm. some of the light. They look the same. Mm -hmm. Big deal. Very much. Right? Okay. So, so this is uh this is comparing them. Very interesting. So I'm about to show you. This is a um, an eclipse. This is about 85, 90% eclipse. And you can't see the eclipse because it's so bright, it's blowing out the lens. But if you put a pair of sunglasses on, you'd be able to see it. But this is mm -hmm. how much the sun is eclipsed. Now, this is a lens flare. That's a lens flare. Mm -hmm. 
But this thing is not moving with the camera. It's locked yeah, in position that. with the sun. Mm -hmm. What what is that? What are we what are we seeing here? Right? And I say, mm -hmm. I think that's the real sun. And this is the sun that we see. Right? This mm -hmm. is not a lens flare. This is a lens flare. Mm -hmm. Right? So jump forward a little bit here. So here's my paper towel eclipse. Now you don't see the thing that's eclipsing it because there's no light coming off of it. So here, here's my source light and here's my eclipse and you don't see it coming in or eclipsing it. You just see the effect of it. Right. You with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so now it's exiting and no one has ever seen the moon exit the eclipse. It just moves away and you can see now I said, you know what? What if the sky is more transparent than my paper towel? which I think it is. Mm -hmm. And so I got a piece of toilet paper, tissue paper. And here I'm looking through the tissue paper here. This is the source light. And this oh is what gosh. we're seeing. This is what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. That's the source light. I, that's the projector. This is the mm -hmm. sun that we see and compare that to the real thing. Is there any difference? None. That's bizarre. Yeah. Like biblically, God put two lights in the firmament. He didn't say he put two stars or whatever you might think. He he just said there were two yeah. lights. And so it's interesting how how it looks like the uh, stars look like they're in water, which is like, are they in water? I mean, I think the, the interesting part about it is like the firmament to me is a solid thing. And lights are in the the stars are mm -hmm. in the firmament, but then the water's above that. So I'm like, I'm kind of, I always kind of wrestle with that idea. I want, I don't know if it's because of maybe they people talk about the ether. Is the ether kind of almost like this kind of clear plasma liquid that's kind of in the sky, and maybe that's why like the things are in this other kind of substance that we don't really quite understand. I, I guess I said I'm kind of just working that stuff out in my mind of like what that all means. We can actually recreate that. We can so we can take. Um, not a rounded cup, but like a, a cup with straight sides, like the fall. So, you know, the, the permanent and uh, in Hebrew, it, the, there's three examples of the permanent, meaning the heavens, like the sky. The, then the, then there's one, the first mention of uh, permanent in Hebrew being rakia with the context of the solid expanse. So the permanent, you know, is a solid expanse. It has a solid, a solid, and there's mm -hmm. space inside of it. If we took a two-sided, flat, hollow thing, Filled it with water, like a rectangle container, filled it with water, and put a light source behind it. I bet you we'd still get the waves. I bet you the waves yeah. would still be shown because the water in the middle of it. We could we could literally do that. Yeah, you no, know? I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting because I've seen, I, I know David Shane's done some interesting video of the moon, and you see like the little ripples on it. I mean, nothing like what the stars look like, but but similar, it almost looks, it almost looks like yeah. it's underwater. I don't know. I guess it's the thing. It's like there's a lot of unknowns about that. And I guess that's another reason why they would lie, because maybe they're maybe they're messing around with some of that stuff. What's your thoughts on? So biblically, I believe, that, yeah, there's a ferment. I believe the earth is not like they say it is. But I saw an interesting video. Have you ever seen that uh, video? It's called uh, The Lost History of Flat Earth. It's if you haven't seen it, you, ha you have to see it. It's, mm -hmm. it's wild. But you, you probably heard people say that what the moon is is a projection of the land on the earth and you ever seen that yeah so what they're showing you though is there's a but it's you know if you ever tried to overlay this with like a map it won't work because there's land past whatever this is and so i so do, are you yeah. do you believe that there's there's possibly land past whatever antarctica would be I think there has to be just because Admiral Byrd said yeah. at his hearing when he's talking about it that there's the size, there's a continent of land the size of America that was past the ice into greenery that was the size yeah. of America past Antarctica. So there's something there that's huge that's just right past the ice. So there's definitely something else there. There's Admiral Byrd's journal, which is an absolutely insane, might be fake. I mean, I've, I've, I've thought, I thought that that might be fake. <laughs> Because what he actually says when you see the TV interview, yeah, he says, because they're asking him, is there any places that are left to be explored for like young explorers? And that's what he says is there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's land bigger than the United States past the South Pole. 
So whatever he means by that, I mean, it's like, obviously it sounded like he wasn't, he didn't sound like he was lying. He sounds like he was just straight up just saying something that was factual. Our guest tonight found out whether there was any land north of the North American continent. He made that first discovery flight and I must say that Admiral Byrd, our guest tonight, is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm. down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, do you hope to see that? I do. <laughs> What I think is interesting is we believe biblically that the, that the sun and the moon go in a circuit. The, the, the stars go in a circuit as well. So what's interesting, if you think about it, like that if the sun goes on the circuit that obviously, you know, based on our equator and the, and the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, like we know that obviously where the sun is, obviously is based on how hot it is and like how habit, inhabitable it is. So what if the places beyond obviously would not have our sun, you know, not to the level that we have it. I mean, you probably could see light at times of the year, but, or do they have their own light source? I mean, I guess that's the real th question is like, people ask like, why would they lie about the shape of the earth? Because you think that this is all that there is. Yeah. If there's land past it, like, what's it like? And I thought, isn't it, wouldn't it be crazy? Isn't it quite a plot twist to think that if there is an ice wall, it's obviously not, you know, as high as a plane could fly they could go over it. Is it possible that their missions to other planets are literally just over to the other side and it's dark over there? Like it's almost like it's outer space because it, it literally, by definition, it would be outer space, right? It's, it's, it's space <laughs> outside here. It's extraterrestrial because there's extra terrain past there. And I do wonder, it's like, that actually makes a lot of sense. Like they, they and who's living there? Like, who is living out in these spots? I mean, I imagine based on, like, life, there there could be things. And, yeah, is that alien? Would they be aliens? Yeah, obviously they would be aliens. They'd be aliens to us because they're not from here. I mean, yeah. again, like, and what could live in a place? Because I don't think that, well, I guess I don't know. I don't know how inhabitable that would be for humans, you know, because that would, it would be well, cold and dark most of the time, I would guess. There's nowhere on Earth that things cannot live. You know, no matter where it is, even under the Antarctic sheets, there That's are true. there are animals and organisms and stuff. And I would even I would, I I even picture maybe a second sun, a second light over there for that. But I would think there has to be creatures over there because it wouldn't make sense for Earth, for Earth that we live on, for there to be all this land when the ice stops. He said. Well, he said when the ice stops. That, that greenery starts. So there's something over there living. There yeah. has to be. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wild idea that, that 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 could be true. But I mean, to me, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense because I think that that's the whole point is like that maybe that's the whole what the, the Truman Shore was really about is the fact that that they don't want us to know that there's things beyond here. Like that we think we think it ends, yeah. but it doesn't really end. I mean, obviously, biblically, I know we're, we're kind of theorizing here, but I mean, biblically, there's no reason to believe that's not true. It's, that's, that's, this is way more biblical yeah. than believing that you could go land something on Mars and you go, you know, have a For little sure. helicopter on Mars. Like, to me, that's the dumbest stuff is like that people like, what was it? Yeah. I saw even like, so the Babylon Bee, you know, they have the satirical site, but they have like, not the bee is there, is there more newsy satire? And they were talking about how, I can't remember which I can't remember which uh, thing that NASA sent up that was supposedly like 15 billion miles away and they finally just lost contact with it. And you're like, do you guys really believe yes, that, that they could send something 15 billion miles away, which obviously is a number you could not even fathom and they could still have a, a signal back and forth with it. Again, like, do you know how signals work? 
and I pay two hundred dollars and I lose <laughs> signal with Verizon and they they're going down like yeah it, it bull yeah you're talking about like they were saying like the amount of power this thing actually has to again you think about that as well like the the idea that these things what we're told about space is like really cold or it's like really hot obviously getting out of the atmosphere like like electronic equipment works well in those kind of conditions billions of miles away. Uh, it's more likely, yeah, that they sent something across to the other places in exploring that. And that, that actually make that makes you make sense. That it actually makes sense that they would do something like that. The idea that isn't I always said the, I always joke that when they talk about how like obviously Earth is getting horrible, right? And like it, with the climate change and blah blah blah, that basically they might have we might have to look for an exit strategy to go inhabit some other place. And I thought Okay, so if you could build a bubble on Mars where we could live there, right? Well, why wouldn't you just do that on Earth? <laughs> like, is is Earth so yeah? You know, is no Earth kidding. so bad that you couldn't do? That? I mean, it still seems like as bad as this place could get. It would still be better than than like Titan, the moon of Saturn. You know, like why would why would you think that would be more inhabitable than maybe just trying to make the best of this situation here? <laughs> I don't know. Everything they say is a lie, man. It's like we went to the we went to this place, we went to the moon or to the something. We were we went somewhere and they give us the list of materials made that the shuttle was made out of. And funny enough, every material that the shuttle's made out of would melt in the temperature that they claim it is where it goes. But I think the deeper thing on this is talking about Antarctica. I think the fact of flat earth and Antarctica and all this stuff, I think this blows uh geopolitics and world governments out of the water because they all are in agreement, and they all are aware that the Earth is flat. They're not stupid. They have space. They all have space organizations. So Putin, Biden, it doesn't matter who, Z, right? <laughs> um, John Un, they all are fully aware what the world looks like. They also even Admiral Byrd himself said, you know, that there there is so much. It's rich in resources beyond uh, Antarctica, and that China. He he said he knows for a fact Russia is uh, very interested in it. And uh, China, they're all interested in it. So, basically, every world leader and people in the know, they're all aware that the world is flat, there's a permit, there's something beyond Antarctica, and all the people don't know, and not a single one of them has told the people. And that tells me that every single one of them are in on it together. Yeah. No, you know what I'm You know what? I just can't, I can't help, like, my, my mind is just kind of, just like, kind of just thinking, like, everything seems to be inverted, right? So... Okay, so we know that the North Pole would be like kind of the, the what it actually is, is magnetic north, right? So the, all the compasses point to magnetic north. But if you believe like what I was just saying about the idea that this is a part of the realm, or the greater realm. So like the realm is actually bigger than that. So like I said, if you, like as you were saying, the UN map, the UN map, the logo is a flat earth map. So what if, okay, so, so we're told that Antarctica is in the south. But actually, you know, based on if you believe in a, a, a flat plane, Antarctica is a wall that goes around the whole thing. So isn't it interesting how mm -hmm. there's a treaty in Antarctica that you, you can't go certain places in there? And again, if you just think about it. So obviously, if you're looking at a, you know, like you just say a greater kind of a disc, right? Okay, so the North Pole's here, but you could still go further north. Like as far as if you started from here to here, you know, you know, you follow what I'm saying? Like, like the idea, yeah. of, like Polaris might not be right o directly over the North Pole. It might actually be past more, more northern. northern. So would it, wouldn't it be crazy? So there's, there's places where you have all these treaties, you have all these flags and people say, when have they ever gone to, you know, to go pay the respect at like Stukat and the Feast of the Tabernacles? What if they still were doing that kind of thing? And that's why they're they're trying to hide what's over there, because they don't want you to know. If they don't that's want you to know that they're actually doing that in the South Pole, when we're all still looking for like the 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 Rupus Negra, we're looking for like the the magnetic North. But actually, it's the North that that Mount Zion is is actually beyond where we're at. Well, even on that 1600 map we're talking about earlier, it shows Rupus Nigra, and around Rupus Nigra is four continents that we don't even know what they yeah. are. So basically, those four continents could be beyond toward the north, which we have never been to, and then there could be Rupus Nigras in the middle of those. So yeah, like you know, like what you're saying that 
These four continents, I, I completely doubt they just disappeared. That doesn't make sense. Well, it makes sense is that we can't go there and that they are there because in my mind, they would not have went through the trouble of drawing it if it didn't exist, right? So it is literally there, but we can't see what those four extra continents are that are around. And it makes more sense. They would travel from those four continents right around there to the Feast of Tabernacles or Unleavened Bread. It makes more sense that they would do that short travel than they would going from South America all the way up through the north. That seems like a very, very long uh, You know, travel. actually, uh, Chris, I just thought about this too. Chris, this is, this is me just wildly theorizing. I hope this is okay for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> that I just thought about it. It's like, okay, so what if, there, what if the maps are not lying about what's in the North Pole right now? What if that land is literally submerged now? What if, it's, what if that has actually been flooded? Because if you really think about it, like, the idea that, again, so the, the Bible says, the, this is the Bible says, the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians, or no, Colossians one twenty three it says that, that every creature under heaven has heard the gospel. You know, and like, so Paul's saying that all the nations have heard in like four different places. We were going through the four different verses where Paul said this happened. And so how would this, how would have, how would have the gospel have spread so quickly? And how would they have gone across oceans and jungles? What if, like that whole idea of the idea that there was this land mass between like Russia and, and, you know, Alaska, you know, what if that wasn't actually, they're not making that up. What if that was actually exposed at some point? And obviously if the water levels got high enough and that's not, it's, it's submerged now. What if that submerged the North pole? And what if that's actually why the map looks different than it does, you know, today? That would make a thousand, I mean, of course, we're theorizing, but that would make sense because, again, it'd be easier to spread the gospel if it was just those quadrants. If the whole Bible is actually not reliant, but based on locations that we don't have anymore, you know, things would, and I mean, even with this whole theory, we'd have to go back and look at every conflict and war and how they traveled and stuff and see if it would work out on this map. I mean, it, it very well could be because there's people who believe that Israel as it is right now is not Israel. Mm -hmm. Um and I you know I, I keep up with modern archaeology and I follow in and I you know I, I actually use that to prove God's existence to people, the fire on the mount, the Red Sea, the sulfur, you know, Song of Mora. It but of course if it's Satan's little season, it's possible he faked everything. Yeah, I mean I, I guess is that I I have definitely considered that and people ask me, do I believe that that America is really Egypt or, you know, like Utah is really Judah and California is really a promised land. Do I believe that? No, I don't believe that. But am I open to the possibility it could be true? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's the thing is it's hard for me to like to think that these things are not so significant that are I mean, there obviously is some way old history over in the Middle East. So it kind of makes sense that it was there. And it's kind of is kind of the middle, even based on like the the well, is it the middle? I mean, it's 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 pretty close to the middle, I guess, of the world. So it makes sense that it was there, but at the same time, there's certainly something that happened here. That, like I said, I, in the United States, I I said this is one of the one of the the many threads in the sweater that got pulled that really got me to this place is the melted stuff, the meltology out west in the United States. It's so weird when you actually look at the stuff and you're just like, again, as I said, you become a real conspiracy theorist when you don't trust the rocks anymore. When you're like. So looking at that rock, man, that rock doesn't look real. That doesn't look like a regular rock. That actually, yeah. yeah if you see some of the some of the, these bigger <clears throat> YouTube channels, I, I follow um, this John Levy. He's not a Christian, but he's got a lot of good stuff about showing that some of these things that look like red mountains, you actually he finds bricks in them, like literally that that the bricks were actually were preserved, wow. and then he finds like metal and he finds glass that's been melted, and so you look at all these, it's very I started to notice the pattern of all these red mountains that don't really look like mountains or, or parts of mountains that are red and the other part looks like a normal mountain, but part of it's red. And I'm like, that sure looked like a structure. Have you ever been to um, Arizona? Mm -hmm. I went uh, over the fall. I went with my wife. Actually, we got married out in Sedona, Arizona. And Sedona is supposedly like it's, it's, it's like this new age hotspot. And to the Native Americans, they mm -hmm. claimed that, that it was actually this mystical city. And you go there and you're like, yeah, you look like you're like, this place was obviously all the red things around the mountains do not look, do not look natural. Don't even tell me wind and rain did that. Don't tell me the Colorado River created the Grand Canyon. I was like, I, 
you can tell me that's either blue in the face. I won't believe it because when you actually see it, you're like, this look like this look like a, a cataclysm happened here. Power of God melted stuff. I don't I don't know, but well, you know the, the, the crazy yeah, I mean, part is like actually I started to think like this was an ancient place that got destroyed. But then I said, when I started watching his channel, when I said, literally, they found bricks and glass. And you're like, wait a minute. What if this wasn't that long ago? What if this was like the timeline of maybe, maybe it was like the little season mud flood time where some of this stuff happened. I don't know. I guess the thing is like, I do not know. And I guess is that maybe that's the, like the humility of being in the space. It's like, there's, there's so many pieces to this puzzle. And I don't know. I don't know that we could know it all never man like we there's no way and also speaking of jerusalem being sort of near the middle of the earth you know there's a 1800s i have some copies of 18 or just some pages of 1800s i think or 1700s 1800s freemason bible a freemasonic bible in the pages it says jerusalem is is the middle of the earth and again that brings me right back to the 1600 maps where you have those four continents in the middle of the earth you have those you have where eden was and the four river yeah. heads coming from eden and i'm like dude there is something up there yeah i know you're talking about like arizona and the melted uh mountains and stuff and to me that's just like you know i mean i i think we'd be ignorant to think that the bible had everything that happened not not to say that the bible is all we need for sure but of course, there's things that happened outside the Bible. God gave us what we needed. But, you know, like, there could have definitely been other civilizations that were pagan in origin, that God warned, that he destroyed, that he didn't feel the need to tell us about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, clearly, the Bible is not a history of everything that's true. I mean, that's what I think that's why people need to understand, like, that we we're saying the Bible was not written to us. The The, the Bible is a story more or less about God's promise to Abraham that's fulfilled through his son, Jesus Christ. And so that's why it kind of makes sense that the Bible ends when it ends, because because Jesus did all the things that he promised he would do based on what the Bible says. And I think that's where like you get into like going back to what we were talking about before. Some people are acting like, oh, well, this these things can't happen yet. Jesus actually hasn't done all the things he said he was going to do yet. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Like, it, it, to me, that's like the, the people who are trying to say, well, where is the camp of the saints? Where is this? Where is that? Jesus is supposed to be in Jerusalem right now. And you're like, Jesus was literally got crucified by those people because they wanted the things that you want to see right now. Right. And so like they still think, oh, well, Jesus came to do this, but but he's going to come back a different way and he's going to be different, but it's still going to be the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, do they say, well, there's two Messiah figures. Yeah the one the, the the lamb and then the lion but they still think that the the lion is supposed to be a very fleshly thing maybe it's not maybe you guys are just wrong about that maybe the idea that the kingdom of heaven was hello in heaven maybe the eternal kingdom was in hello in heaven because i, I almost tried to think about this recently that the idea of that that we view history because we know things how how they are right now where people take for granted that you can go to heaven and be with God one day. When you read the Old Testament, they didn't believe that, right? Like that was never promised to them. You know, like, you know, Abraham's, God's promise to Abraham was to have a descendants, as many as the sands of the sea, the stars in the sky, and eventually that he would have a, 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 a kingdom that would basically save all nations through him. But he didn't, like, God didn't say you can go to heaven one day. Right. And so we take for granted the kingdom of heaven. Right. It's almost like, well, yeah, I want that when I die, but I still want the, the thing here. Right. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because Jesus, you know, literally when Jesus was crucified, he descended into the belly of the belly of the earth. He descended into Hades to minister to all the people that died. And then in his ministry, when he was telling people that you're going to go to, he was, he was basically saying you're going to go to hell if you live a bad life. Basically, he said, he said you will see. He said first you will see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then you will be hewn down. So there's a point when Abraham and all of them did end up being with Jesus in the kingdom of heaven. But yeah, but I believe they said the, uh, that's probably like the cap setting the captives free. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then, but yeah, like in the old days, you know, um, they all their hope, all the prophets' hope was in the coming of Jesus. That was when all the hope that that was everything 
Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And then, they, but he was not what they, they he was not what they wanted him to be. As I said, it's funny. I've I've been saying this a couple times recently. Is that that the whole saying of everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Yeah. So they want. So everybody. So everybody who's obviously hoping on a pre-trip rapture doesn't want to die. I don't really, you know, I, I don't really have any hope to die either. I mean, I know that like to live is Christ and to die is gain, but at the same time, like that 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 is the. Isn't that interesting how Paul says that? He's saying that to, to, to die is gain. He doesn't say to be raptured is gain. He's actually, because he's, he, he's obviously not, he's not counting on a rapture. Isn't that interesting? To be raptured just is saying. gain. Yeah, to be raptured. Well, again, isn't it, isn't it interesting that he knew that he was going to die and he he was the one that people point to when they talk about a rapture. And he's, and again, I've said, a, you point very clearly that he's actually knows that it's coming in his lifetime. Yeah. The things that are, are about to happen interestingly enough but yeah so that's that whole idea is like that that's what people are still saying that jesus has not done all the things that he said he was going to do or the gospel has not been preached all around the world even though the bible says it has. Yeah, sure has point being point point being like there was a time before the bible when people 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 say all the time that well god would never let anything happen to his word and you're like he never he said his words would not pass away he didn't say that the paper version of them would like obviously in the same way that if God spoke to Abraham and Abraham walked in faith before there was scrolls of all these things written down, yeah. he believed like there could be a time where that could happen too. And again, like the Bible, the canon was all was basically wrapped up then because God kept his promises to the people there. And obviously through him, all nations are saved and that's us. So what happened? So what happened after that? Like I said, that that is again, that is the real that is the question. Like that is the question that we can we can believe what Jesus said very reliably. Um, I have no doubt of that. Like I said I have I have no doubt that I have enough to believe that he kept his word. Now, after that, I will do my best because I'm for one, I'm curious. For two, that's like I, for for all y'all, I do want to keep digging in there to like to answer the peop the skeptics because like I said, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> I know. I know that you want to know. Yeah, for sure. It, it's just it's uncharted territory, and I mean, I think we will die way before we find the answers we're looking for. But I think we can do our best to pull up everything. You know, like we we are we are getting the work done. There are questions being answered, right? Like you know, yeah. As far as mm -hmm. the Antichrist and the the Nero's pledge of, to Rome. And his demand to worship him and the antiquity of the Jews. And we're finding things that we were never told. So it's, you know, but it's really just, do we believe the words of the Bible? But I mean, may, I mean, every night I go to sleep and I, I want to see these ancient things. I want to see ancient Egypt. I want to see what happened here. I want to know the truth with this. I'm just, I always want to know and to see things that we haven't seen and that we're lied to about. And I figure, you know, one day when I die, God will tell me all the things I want to hear. You know what I mean? Cause I want to know all this stuff and how this happened. Yeah. I just figure, you know, one day, you know, we could be like the, the deviants and we could do after projection and see fake sites of demons or even real sites of demons, or we can just, you know, be faithful mm -hmm. till death then eventually be shown. Yeah, you know, that's a good point you bring up. I want to dwell on that for just one second. The fact that, like, even in your own school, like, history books, you would you would hear about, like, Nero and certain emperors like that claiming to be gods while they're alive, which I, I read this book about Rome, and it's very interesting. Obviously, Rome is so significant to our society, like, it's, it's worth looking into in itself. But previous Roman emperors were worshipped as gods after they died. Like that they believe that probably because they were descendants of, you know, Nephilim and stuff like that. So they were, they were deified. But then later on, like certain emperors started to literally claim that they were God. They were like Apollo. Isn't it interesting that that, 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 that is not a conspiracy. That is what history tells us. Like that's, that's straight from a history book, from like from like a college professor, you know, doing an audio book. So what's interesting, if, Caligula, Nero, and certainly certain um, emperors claim to be Apollo, reborn or whatever. Isn't it interesting that Apollyon is the beast that comes out? He's the king of the bottomless pit. He's the yeah. one that Satan gives his authority over to. And like, so so people looking for, oh, who could the Antichrist be? So the Nero's, the gematria of Nero's name is literally 666. And he claimed to be Apollo. 
like how much more do you want? I mean, he's claiming to, this guy claimed to be God. Yeah. You know, he was trying certain emperors were trying to set up statues of themselves in, you know, in the temple. So like the idea that I don't know, like how many other instances in history did, I mean, I don't know that Alexander the Great ever claimed to be God, you know, but, but I know these times in the times of Jesus and the apostles, these emperors were literally claiming to be God. And then the Statue of Liberty being with the chain on the ankle being broken. Why That's do they have a statue of Helios, Apollyon, Apollo, Abaddon? And why is there a statue of him in the center of center of United States, you know, like New York? And it's it's the same person that Nero claimed to be. And the money shows Nero to be Apollo as well. And it once again, he said he was God right in Jesus' time. It's simple, I know. man. It's it really it, it, simple. It's it's pretty wild. It's like that, that kind of stuff. It's like only until you're willing to accept some of these things do you see like it actually it makes so much more sense. And I think that's where you know where you're saying earlier that so many people. I've had certain people who obviously it, it it does cut a little bit when certain people like you know have liked all your stuff and then they start saying oh I can't follow you anymore you like you you're this you're that but I've had so many other people who actually if they actually listen to what we say they're like this makes a lot of sense like you know so when we when we go to the scriptures like we have so many of them that we can quote and then we start to pepper in like the historical things and you're like I think it's I think it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty open and shut case at this point, like that, that's what they were talking about. That, I mean, that's what the Bible was talking about. Absolutely. And maybe, and maybe if you can't, if I can't give you a one for one of everything, oh, this scripture says this, and this is a historical thing that happened. Well, may, two possibilities. One, it could be like, maybe we just don't know. We don't have the history to back up everything. Or two, maybe it's not exactly like you thought it was going to be. Maybe in your mind you thought you pictured something that it doesn't quite fit and it wasn't quite like that. Again, like the whole idea of like that I've seen so many, so often, we just did a, a video refuting like that truth unedited talking about like how he debunks preterism or yeah. whatever. And one thing he was talking about was like he was using, he was conflating all these Old Testament scriptures about the return of Judah and Israel back to the land. And then with, with basically with, God sending his, you know, sending Jesus to them. And it happened. I was like, but, but that obviously like, but they're conflating that because it's like when all those prophecies were being told were either before the captivity or during the captivity. And you're like, so are, are we, are we going to just trying to ignore the whole second temple period at all together? They, it is like, they try to forget that there ever was another temple I don't think they know. in order for to say, yeah, it's in order for them to say, Oh well, he, he, this is clearly old. These are clearly millennial kingdom prophecies because I think it's like they're prophesying about a return and then this Messiah offering them an eternal kingdom. That's what Jesus did. Yeah. Like that's literally what that's literally what he did. And if you don't, if you can't quite wrap your mind around it, well, you're not alone because the people who crucified him couldn't wrap their mind around it either. Yeah, man, definitely. Um, and I think you know, like you were saying about the people who. Um, they acknowledge that it does make sense. I think that we can get out of the spirit of, of pride and into the spirit of the Lord. I believe as we see the truth, we can say, you know what? That makes sense. That that does sound right. Because I've had people message me and they say, there's something about it. I just know it's right. I, I've heard what you said. It makes sense. But there's something about it that's on a deeper level. And I know it's right. And then, yeah, like the untruth, the truth unedited and these people, like, they're using Old Testament scriptures that are talking about the time of Jesus or, you know, Jacob's trouble. And they, 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 they've they always done this. They use it for the pre-trib. They use it to, to blow everything out of proportion. I think they don't really understand the scope of history that these writings were done in. You know, like, when they, it's a popular belief in Christianity that Daniel's talking about a third temple when he's talking about the 70 weeks and he's talking about the second <laughs> temple, dude. It's unbelievable. So, it's unbelievable how that's messed. Yeah, so they're just taking the Old Testament and they're talking about things that are old against the Old Testament. Yes, the Old Testament does have things about um, the Millennial Kingdom and the coming of Christ and all this stuff, but the Old Testament, you know, it, it's the New Testament fulfills the Old Testament. You know, and again, I believe we are yeah. right dead center in Revelations 20, the end of the millennial kingdom, because that's where history, that's hit where history leads us to. That's where the Bible leads us to. And the words that Jesus own, like you, 
you have to say he's lying. If you don't believe what he says, you have to say he's lying. Amen. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly now. Well, anyways, uh, Moon, it's been awesome having you. Hey, please tell people where they can find you at and um, and if you want to promote anything you're working on. Nothing really, man. Um, you know, y'all can find me at Inspired by the King on uh, TikTok, Moon Henry on Facebook, me, JT, David Shane, I believe John Truth, Pastor Dean Odell was possibly going to be into it. I'm not sure now. Ryan Garcia. <laughs> um, we're all doing a um, Ryan from Demon Racers. We're all doing an awesome documentary getting into uh, the Jesuit Society, which I believe is who runs the world under Satan. Who also, funny enough, is founded in 1776 through the Bavarian Illuminati and Adam Weishoff, who was a Jesuit. And uh, but a lot it, of stuff happened that year. <laughs> yeah, everything seemed to happen. And also, so we'll all be in it, and we're gonna do our best to prove the little season as well. Everything that has, everything that's hidden, we want to bring to light. So that's what we plan on doing in this documentary. Yeah, so that's it. I'm excited. Obviously, connecting with with Moon Henry over here, I'm like excited because I think that again, that's the only way I think we're really going to get closer to the truth. Is like we. We need all hands on deck. We need we need as many people taking parts of this conspiracy and iron sharpening iron. So I'm 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 really stoked to to be a part of that. So obviously, guys, look out for that. But I mean, obviously, I'm sure we're gonna have many more conversations on here. And I think, are you trying? Do you do you have a a, a YouTube channel as well? Because obviously, a lot of people who are gonna be looking for for more of your stuff. Uh, I mean, I do have a YouTube inspired by the King YouTube YT, but I'm gonna start using that probably soon i'm not using it right now i know you're pushing me to so i'll get on there soon yeah i'm saying you need to get i'm sure that people are going to say get on there and uh, i know that your people are going to watch you on there so sure. well anyways brother it was it was awesome having you man anyways um yeah once again i'll put all uh moon henry's links down in the down in the description and obviously we'll have to do this again brother for sure man appreciate it all right man god bless guys